So on October 17, 2020, the Kamloops Flying Club played host uh, to the BC General Aviation's sixth survival shakedown at a site that was approximately 15 kilometers south of Kamloops at an elevation of roughly 1,200 meters or so. So if you're not familiar with the survival shakedowns, uh, participants are placed in a scenario, and in this case it was a flight from Kamloops to Seashelt, where a forced landing or a crash uh, occurs and uh, we're at a site that's uh, approximately 24 hours away from rescue. So there were 18 participants including myself and we were assigned individual campsites where we had to set up shelter and collect enough wood and material to sustain us until morning using basically only the survival gear that we would normally carry on such a flight. We were checked on every hour or so by the coordinators, uh, which comprised uh, mostly uh, search and rescue folks from Kamloops and the Lower Mainland, as well as Ryan Van Heeren. So they were just checking on us for safety and to provide tips if things, you know, weren't going right or if we had questions, because, you know, I'm not a camper and I've got little to no outdoor skills, but I do have a YouTube channel, so I decided to video my progress. I'll try to provide a link uh, to my previous video that I did a few weeks back uh, showing my survival pack. Um, I did have a couple of minor issues at first, but later in the evening I did have a fairly significant issue. That prevented me from completing the, the whole night out, and uh, I actually had to leave around uh, 10 p.m. or so for a medical reason. Yeah, and I go, okay, well, let's see how that works. I've never seen that before. He literally lit it. And what it does is it burns straight down. And he actually had, he, did, he didn't have to actually tend his fire nearly as much as a person who actually has to add fire going bigger you, using, the, using that method. You do that with a stump too. If you split it a bunch and build your tinder fire in the middle, it's now a stove and it burns for about three, four hours once you get it. That so so grow, even I'm learning stuff for sure. That won't grow too big on uh, No, it actually, well, I only did it in a small version. I was doing a class uh, for a, a, a bunch of students how I almost, or how I fly, no, how I really call this? How I crash. <laughs> or how I survive after I crash. <laughs> and then... Okay. Okay. Anywhere in here. Okay. This is home. Lots of wood, yeah. All right. There's another trail right here. Yeah. You might follow it for a bit. So this trail hooks up to the open area after it's down to the road. But I'm going to follow this one for now. Is it here? Yeah. So we kind of go across and hook up. This is it. This is my site. Oh, there's lots of dead wood laying around. That's good. <laughs> Pretty close to a road, so I hear the cars going by. Well, time to get started.
So it doesn't look like firewood's gonna be much of a problem. There's tons and tons of dead wood in there. But I guess I should figure out where I'm gonna put my tent. I don't know. There's a pretty soft spot in between that tree and this one. But I don't know how big my tent is. Because I've never taken it out of the package. So I think I'm going to figure that out first. And uh, yeah, this is nice and soft right here. Just get some of this some of this stuff out of here and it might make for a reasonably comfy soft bed to put down on and either way it's going to be uncomfortable there's no doubt about it but all right I'll dig my tent out and then I'll continue Okay, it's starting to get winded already. That's not a good sign, but there's the emergency tube tent. I'm not sure about the placement. It does have to be strung between two trees, but it also should be reasonably close to the fire. And I'm not sure if this is a very good place to light a fire. So, for now, I'm going to leave it where it is and uh, continue on. Okay, so I'm about half an hour in. I'm already getting winded. That's because I'm in horrible shape. Um, so, so far, my emergency tent, which is actually a three-sided garbage bag, is set. And I don't know, as a city slicker, what is safe to build a fire on. There's no hard dry ground. There's all this mossy undergrowth type stuff that's very soft and very wet. So what I did is I found a bunch of... Uh, what are rotted soaking wet logs and kind of built a bit of a base to which I'm hoping to build a fire on and hopefully keep enough airflow and uh, not set up a, a ground fire. And then all around it, this moss is really soft. So I just kind of kicked away a path all around it that if things get out of hand, it'll serve as a bit of a windbreak. Um, there's lots and lots of wood here. It's all in various sizes and shapes, of course. Um, most of it is small. So, I'm not going to bother taking out my buck saw just yet. Unless I really have to. So I've got my smalls, my kindling. I've got a fire starter kit in my, my bag over there. So, probably in about an hour, a bit more foraging. I'll keep piling up my smalls pile. And then over here, I'm starting to find some uh, larger um, some larger deadwood that I'm hoping to use for uh, like feeders. So I'm not going to bother cutting those up because, like I said, I'm already getting a little bit winded. But if I get bored later on and I'm uh, in the mood... <laughs> I might start cutting some pieces into more manageable sizes, but all around me, like there's there's fell logs everywhere, and uh, I should have no trouble. And then I want to find something reasonably large to be able to sit on, because uh, Camp Mar here doesn't have a whole lot of uh, creature comforts, and uh, 
later on when I start getting really tired and my legs get uh, sore, my arms get sore, I'm going to want to sit down for a while. And as of right now, I don't have anything uh, suitable to sit on. So working on it. All right, so the time now is about almost 2.30. Uh, we've been here, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. And uh, when you're not in good shape, like me, foraging for fours for a firewood, even within 50 feet either side of uh, this little camp here, um, it uses way more energy than you think. Maybe because I'm in poor shape, or maybe it just takes a lot of energy, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to go and buy with what I do know, which is I'm out of shape and I'm a little winded. Um, so I did break out the uh, the buck saw because um, I found a, a good looking log that was nice and long and straight. And uh, it was a little bit too thick, but I think it'll be good for um, a feeder log. So I just dragged two thirds of it up. The other third I'm going to leave for now because, again, I don't want to get too, too bad. And uh, I think from now until the sun goes down in, what, probably four hours, this is pretty much it, is just foraging for wood and get these piles as, um, as high as I can get them. Because um, you don't want to be going anywhere when it's dark out, I guess. Um, so, so far... I've only consumed about a half a liter of liquid and the only thing that I've taken out of my survival pack so far is the tent and the buck saw. Oh, and I decided to switch to uh, these rubber palm work gloves because uh, my winter gloves that I brought with me because it is going to get cold later on. Um, I just found I was getting too warm, too sweaty and as it is even with a fleece on. I'm thinking this has to come off for the next little while, but uh, then I'm concerned that I'm going to get too cold. But um, so far, so good. Um, again, lots of wood. The next test is going to be uh, seeing if I can get a fire going. Okay, I'll check back. It's only been 15 minutes since my last report. It's now quarter to three. The piles are growing. Got a lot of uh, small kindling stuff. Um, a lot of it's dry. I think mean, some of it's a little wet, but if I can get a fire going with uh, most of the dry stuff, I can probably slowly dry out some of the, the wetter wood. And uh, the... Uh, the bulk of the firewood, the real stuff, is uh, starting to grow here now, too. Alright, so it's five after three. The wood piles 
continued to grow somewhat. Most of the wood here is, even the dead stuff I thought was going to be drier, but it, it really looks like it's half rotted. Um, and I just had my first site visit by one of the uh, coordinators to uh, give me a few tips because uh, I had a couple of fundamental problems here. Number one is the uh, the placement of the fire in relation to where I'm going to be crawling in and out of the um, the little tent. Um, so he suggested that instead of the head of my uh, tent being there and the fire over here, is that I'm going to spend basically all night crawling in and out to um, try to tend to the fire as the evening goes on. So, um, without moving too much radically too far, I'm going to set up a little uh, fire ring just kind of right, right near the front of the uh, the tent, and I have to kind of be mindful of the overhang up above me and the proximity to the tent. I don't want it melting or embers flying out and catching it on fire. Um, and because we know it's going to rain tonight starting around 11, um, this whole area is a bit of a bowl. I think if you look around, um, everything is kind of higher ground. And because of the rain, oh, let me stand up, everything kind of slopes down towards my site. So there's not really a good, real good place to, um, to set up here. But this is where I crashed, right? And another tip he gave me is these um, tube tents. Because they kind of sit flush to the ground, they're kind of a natural, um, if we do get water kind of running down this way, it can just leak right into the tent. So I was told that it would be a good idea if I uh, find some way to tie up or duct tape the uh, the ends of the tent in a way that uh, they won't be able to let water run in so good tip from Ryan and uh, yeah so it's now 10 after 3 so still lots and lots of foraging to do and um, I have now to go and forage some rocks so I can uh, build a little ring to, to put around my fire because uh, this stuff, yeah, another good point he made was that uh, all this soft ground and it's nice and green and soft and moist is because it's well watered. And uh, we're going to get rain tonight, so chances are this is going to be a pretty soggy place later on. So I'm going to uh, collect up some rocks and build, just build a small fire ring, something, you know, 18 inches around or something like that. And uh, probably within the next hour, try to start working on the fire. Okay, four o'clock, all's well so far. Just had my second site visit, checking in on me. Um, no problems, things are going okay. I'm told that I now have enough firewood to do me for the rest of the night, but I'm still gonna probably forage for another, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes or so, and uh, uh, just to make sure, because I definitely don't wanna run out um, so here's what I've collected so far. It's, it's getting a little messy now, but there's some more larger feeder logs that I'm not really interested in cutting up. So I'll just, uh, drag those through the fire as it, uh, as the evening goes on. I'll keep those ones probably for last because they'll be closest to the uh, head of the tent and I don't want to be getting in and out to come to my much larger pile. It's, uh, Probably getting enough now that I can start selling firewood to everybody else around me. And then I've got my smaller, drier pile over here. So, built a bit of a fire ring. Nothing too fancy. I found this um, um, really dry, rotted stuff underneath a, a wood pile. And I mean, it's, it's basically just sawdust. So that should go up pretty fast and get me going. Um, I will set the camera on before I start the fire, but that'll be another 
like I said, half an hour, 45, maybe an hour, depending. I'm not cold yet, so I figure if uh, if I'm not cold, it's not, there's no real point, and it's not raining. Um, so I don't think I'm going to have too much problem starting a fire, especially with all this dry stuff here and uh, the abundance of lighters and matches and combustible stuff that I have with me that uh, I don't think I'm going to have any problem. So um, if I'm not cold and it's not raining, I don't see a point in starting a fire yet. Because um, all it's going to do is use up some of the fuel and the longer I can delay starting a fire, then theoretically I think the, the better off I'll be. Um, so I think I'm just going to forage for another little bit and then I'm going to... Uh, um, go through my survival pack again and probably take out um, at least one of those space blanket things and try to find a way to um, seal up the end of the tent and uh, if it is going to be raining my feet are going to be on that end so I might try to find a way to uh, just wrap a, a space blanket around it and maybe duct tape it or or something one of the tips I was given by Ryan is uh, because it's going to be raining as water will be running down here it'll go straight inside the tent and uh, uh, start dripping on me so if you make a, a drip knot as the rainwater runs down it'll just drip off of here rather than running down into the tent sounds good in theory I have no idea I'm not very outdoorsy I set one up over here on the other side as well but I don't really know where to uh, position it because I, you know, I don't want it dripping so close to where, you know, my head is going to be right here. So I set up my sleeping bag and uh, there's not a ton of room in here. But if it is raining, at least it'll keep me dry. I don't know about this sleeping bag. I don't know how warm that's going to keep me, but uh, we'll see. Better than nothing, at the very least. So, I'll check in with you again just before fire starting time. Probably again, like I said, in half an hour or half an hour or an hour. So, it's now 4.30 and I think I'm done foraging wood for now. I've got uh, a couple of really good piles built up there and uh, the last time the uh, staff were by, they told me I had probably enough to last me all night. And uh, I don't see a point in going too crazy with it. I'm just going to try to keep a very small fire going. And uh, just enough to uh, maybe boil a pot of water. But, uh, so, I dug out one of those uh, space blankets. They're actually a little bit bigger than I thought they were. Um, just more to, uh, to seal off the end and I'll see how this works for now. And, uh, I've got lots of these. I've got six or seven in my bag. So if it looks like it's working, I'll keep it. If it looks like it's not working, I may add another one or, um, or just take it down altogether and try to find a different way to seal up the end of the tent. Uh, a whole roll of duct tape is there, so hopefully it'll be enough starting to get a little chilly here now. I think it's still well above freezing, but uh, for me, this is a lot of work, and uh, I've been sweating a fair bit, so I'm starting to get a little bit cool. So I'm thinking now is probably a time to uh, put my fire starting um, skills to the test, um, dig out my survival bag, go through it, see what I think I'll need for the rest of the evening. And uh, otherwise, I think uh, as long as it's not raining, um, I found that nice big fat log there to uh, to sit on. So I think that's going to be my perch for the evening, is just to sit up and basically tend to the fire for as long as I can until, uh, until it starts raining at least. And I get too uncomfortable to be outside, but I've got a rain jacket, but I really don't want my pants to get wet. Um, so I'll stay out as long as I can and just basically keep adding wood to the fire. So I'll probably give it another 15 or 20 minutes. Um, 
I just don't want to be burning up fuel that I don't have to. All right, so it's almost quarter to five. And I think it's about time to start the fire. I don't know when it's going to start raining. It doesn't feel like it's going to anytime soon, but it is starting to get a little chilly. I haven't put my coat on yet, but I don't want to uh, wait too, too long. So, um, here we go. Lots of small stuff ready to go. So, fail number one. Apparently the uh, piece of paper that my cord was wrapped in isn't a good fire starter. But standby one. So, attempt number two. I'm going to use the Vaseline soaked cotton balls. Battle it without any problem at all. So I've got a ton of that uh, that dry rot wood sitting in there. So hopefully that'll catch without too much problem. But in the meantime, get more of these really tiny twigs. The stuff that I know is really dry. That should catch without any problem. I think we have success. Of course, it's cheating a little. You can hear cars going up and down the highway. We're actually not that far from the main road on uh, Lac Lejeune Road, but, uh, and we have cell service. But otherwise, going to try not to uh, try not to cheat too much. I'm not going to order any skip the dishes or dominoes or anything. So All right, so I'm going to uh, pay some close attention to the fire here and I'll check back when it's going nice and good. We have fire. So the fire was actually 
very easy to light. Um, lots and lots of small stuff here. Um, this bone dry, almost sawdusty kind of um, log that I found that was shown to me. I can't take all the credit. Uh, one of the instructors showed it to me and said it'd be excellent to start the fire. Um, so it lit reasonably easy and I've already started to get a small bed of coals going. So I brought in my first feeder log. That's about oh, 15 or 18 feet long and it's probably not very dry at all but uh, I figure while the bed of coals is establishing itself I can at least start to dry out and I'm going to keep on adding you know some of this smaller stuff in and around it actually I probably should right now as well because uh, it looks like I'm not a campfire guy I don't know how long this is going to last but um, anyway um, reason for the update well we're 5 p.m. now and still no sign of rain um, but first problem with having a garbage bag for a tent is I've got my first ember damage an ember just landed there and burnt a hole right into the tent so with uh, forecasted rain that is going to be a problem so I'm going to add another uh, space blanket to the um, to the outside of the tent just to protect it and uh, give me some more measure of uh, waterproofing or some measure of waterproofing um, I definitely don't want that uh, holes forming up overnight uh, when it starts raining so check back with you so it's 5 30 fire's been going now for a while and uh, I gotta say so far so good the whole feeder log concept I'm not sure about at the moment because it's I haven't moved it yet, so I don't know that it's actually burning. I mean, it's drying out and it's spitting off embers, but I don't think there's a whole lot of heat or flame coming off of the uh, the feeder log. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, otherwise, um, if anything, finding so far so good. Uh, we got about another 12 hours to go, and if it wasn't for the um, the threat of rain. For tonight I can see staying warm all night would actually be dare I say it fairly easy because so far I haven't even put on my jockey yet and uh, um, boring maybe um, but you know staring at a fire and tending to a fire is something I actually like and I don't know so so far it's been kind of peaceful but I mean there's a I'm I'm not in a position where I have crashed and this is it I'm I've got to do this or I'm gonna die um, so so far it's been not too bad uh, we'll see what happens later on when it gets cold and when the rain starts so not 10 minutes after uh, my last one where I was starting to get a little bit cocky maybe saying that uh, this was easy and peaceful my first holy shit moment the fire just died like it just died and uh, it didn't take a lot but uh, just throwing some more small stuff in there and some reasonably dry stuff uh, I was able to get it to come back up but uh, for a non camper non outdoorsy type person the fire is turning out to be surprisingly well it was easy to start but it's a lot of work to collect up the wood it's going to be a lot of work to keep the fire going especially when it starts raining later on um, but yeah first holy ship moment around 5 45 all right so we're just after 6 p.m. fire's going good again after that last holy ship moment um, so I'm starting to get hungry. They just came around again and first question they asked was have we eaten yet? And I hadn't so I just boiled my pot of water. I had to kind of estimate what uh, two cups of water is to uh, 
add into my uh, Mountain House macaroni and cheese product. So, instructions say to open it at the notch. Remove the oxygen uh, pouch. Pour in two cups of hot water. And let it sit for about eight or nine minutes. Like I said, I don't know if this is two cups or not, but I kind of estimated it. It's probably going to be too runny. At least it's hot. Mac and cheese, how bad can it be? Okay, so just coming up on 9 p.m. Um, fire still doing good. Giving off tons of heat. It's um, gotten a bit colder. Uh, I've had to put on my coat and my toque. And it's been a while since I did an update because I've had a couple of interesting hours. Um, about 7, yeah, around 7 p.m. or so, my heart started to race. And I was really nauseous and uh, my heart went up to about 130 beats per minute. And I wasn't doing anything at the time. So this is after doing all the foraging, all the work, you know, work, all of the work cutting down the wood. And um, I was just sitting there and getting ready to eat supper. And all of a sudden I just turned green and my heart started going crazy. Uh, it's been two hours. It's still above 100. Um, I feel fine. Um, I think physically I'm just gassed. Um, Collecting up all the firewood and everything has been uh, a whole lot harder than maybe I gave credit for, or I'm just in worse shape than I ever thought. Um, but I was really surprised that uh, um, my heart would speed up like that. Not cold, not exertion, nothing. Just, just sitting there waiting. Maybe it was the anticipation of that delicious macaroni and cheese, which... It wasn't very good. It uh, it was really crunchy and it wasn't good. Uh, so that's working its way through, and uh, and then the heart issue, and so now I'm just I'm monitoring it uh, every half hour, or so I'm taking a pulse count, and um, yeah, just waiting for the rain to start. Bye.